subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. It's yet another day, and I'm glad to welcome each and every one of you to this episode of the SHSR on Joy Learning channel. I am Judith Oforua, and I am going to be your facilitator for course accounting SHS1. Today, our topic is going to be on material control. And by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to define material control. You will also be able to state the essentials of material control, state and explain the material control process, and then explain the purchasing procedure. But before we start today's topic, let's recap on what we did last week. Last week, we looked at the element of cost, and we were able to prepare a cost statement for a particular product. But before we start, we will solve one question based on element of cost by preparing a cost statement for an organization. Let's look briefly at the question. A manufacturer has shown an amount of 38,620 in the books as establishment, which really includes the following cost statement. So you can see the cost elements are stated below. Take your pens and your notebooks and try and jot them down. And after writing them, try and indicate where it falls, whether it's an overhead or it's a prime cost. Then you go down and look at the requirements of the question, which will help us to be able to group our cost elements. So we have interest on debenture. Take your pen and paper. F will be for finance or other expenses. Then you use S as selling. Let's use A also to represent administration. And then D as distribution. Per our requirement, we are supposed to look for the total selling overheads, total distribution overheads, administration overheads, and then other expenses. So if you've been able to indicate where each of the cost elements will fall, let's all try and solve it together. So per our first requirement, which is asking us to prepare the total selling overheads. Let's begin. So from our first requirement, we are supposed to calculate for total selling expenses or total selling overheads. So take your notepads and then your pens and let's all do this together. Requirement A, selling overhead. So selling overheads. When we talk about selling overheads, we want to know all the expenses we incurred in selling a product that have been produced. The salesmen we involve, the advertisement. So go to the question and identify any cost that was incurred with regards to what selling the product. So back to our question. If you've been able to identify them, then that makes it easy for us to rule. When we look at interest on debenture, it has nothing to do with um, selling. Agent commission, the people you employ to market your products for you, you need to pay them their wages. So that falls under what? Selling overhead. So we go back to our worksheets and we indicate agent commission. And the amounts for agent commission 
is 24,000. We have 24,000. 2,400, sorry. We go back to our question. Another cost element and uh, selling overhead is the bad debt. When you sell your products and your debtors do not pay, any amount left or due then becomes what? A bad debt. So that also falls under selling. That's 600. So let's indicate it here, bad debt. Bad debt is 600. Sorry for the agent commission, it's rather 13,500. Any other item with regards to selling? We have traveling expenses of salesmen. It was because of selling or advertising of the products that we incurred any cost on them. So our salesmen, any cost we incurred on a salesman falls under selling overheads. So let's indicate that on our worksheet. Traveling expenses of salesmen and the amount is 3520 Selling expenses. <laughs> Traveling expenses of salesmen. That is 3520 So that will be the total overhead cost for selling. Let's add it all. We have 13500 plus 600 plus 3520 So for the total of selling overhead cost, we have 17000 620 for selling. Our requirement B is asking us to calculate the total distribution overheads. So this is regards to whatever costs we incurred after the products have been produced. The rent for warehouse to keep the products, how the product get to our customers after us getting them is what we are going to be looking at under the distribution overhead cost so we go through our question quickly and identify any cost element that we incurred with regards to what distribution overhead so we come back to our worksheet and we indicate our requirements b as total distribution Overheads. This is regards to warehouse. Whatever cost we incurred in keeping the product safe is a distribution cost. So quickly to our question, we have rent and rates and insurance warehouse. We have rent and rate insurance office, but office work has got nothing to do with our distribution. So the warehouse, we rented the warehouse to keep our product for distribution. So the 620 of rent, rate and insurance will fall under our distribution overhead. So let's all quickly indicate it in our worksheet. We have rent rates. Rent rates and insurance. 
can put the warehouse into brackets. And that was 620. We go back to our work question. And you can see warehouse wages. As I mentioned earlier, any cost incurred with regards to our distribution. So we'll be paid wages for the warehouse as in any person taking care of our warehouse it can be the work of the watchman we need to pay the person so warehouse wages falls under distribution and the amount here is three thousand six hundred we have warehouse wages And the amount given here is 3,600. So let's indicate that quickly. 3,600. Back to our question. We can see warehouse repairs. Warehouse repairs here. Warehouse repairs. And the amount is 3,000 Ghana CD. So back to our worksheet. Let's indicate that here. Warehouse repairs and the amount given is three thousand. So we indicate that here three thousand. Let's go through our question briefly and see if there is any other cause with regards to distribution. We have cash discounts allowed, no donations, no bank charges, lighting of warehouse. You can see warehouse here, lighting of warehouse. So that also falls under our distribution cost. I'll continue on the next page. So we have lighting. Of warehouse. And the amount given is 540, 540. So we indicate that here, 540. Okay. So from our question, we can see that we've been able to identify all the calls with regards to what distribution. So now we can do this um, addition to know the total distribution overhead calls incurred on a product so let's add it up we have 540 plus 3000 plus 3600 plus 620 and that will give us 7760 so i'll sum it up here Seven thousand seven hundred and sixty, and that gives us the total distribution overhead cost incurred on the products. The next requirement is administrative overhead, administrative or administration overheads, and with administration overheads, it has to do with all costs incurred in the running of a business, all costs incurred in the running of the business. So when you go to your school administration and ask for your report to be printed for you the cost of the stationary forms parts of the running of the business so here we are only going to identify all the costs we incurred with regards to administration work so let's go back to our question and identify all the costs that have been incurred with regards to running of a business so the first on our bill is office salaries when you see office, that should help you to identify all the costs that falls under administration. So we go back to our worksheet and we indicate requirement C. Requirement C is total administration overheads. 
So the first says office salaries. Office salaries. Once you see the office there, you should know that it was incurred with regards to the running of an organization. We pay the office staff. So the amount given is $2,260. So let's indicate that on our worksheet. $2,260. Back to our question, we have rent rate and insurance office. Rent rate and insurance office, as indicated here. We have the first one, rent rate and insurance for warehouse, but this time around is rent rate and insurance office, meaning it was incurred for administrative purposes. And the amount stated is what, 460. So let's go back to our worksheet and indicate that rent rate, rate, and insurance. Into bracket office, because the first one was for warehouse, and the amount is worth 460. All right, back to our question. We have trade magazines which falls under office. When you enter some companies or some organizations, you will notice that they have all these graph papers for their staff to be reading. So that falls under what's running of the business. So let's indicate it here. Trade magazines. The amount is 140. One forty. Okay, we have lighting of office. Lighting of office. As I said, once you see office there, you should know that that cost was incurred for administrative purposes. So lighting of office is here. Lighting of office and the amount is also 140. So back to our worksheet, we indicate lighting of office. Lighting of office and the amount is 140 cities. Let's go through quickly and see if we have absorbed all the office costs in CAD. But we can see printing and stationery. Printing and stationery here. And the amount given is 3000 So we go back to our worksheet and indicate that we use the papers or the printing papers at the office to run the business. So it falls under administrative costs. Printing. And stationery and the amount given is three thousand cities. We also have directors remuneration. We have directors remuneration. Any amount or salaries we paid to our directors are being prepared by the administrative staffs. So that is also another cost incurred for administrative purposes. Director's remuneration is stated as 2,800. So let's indicate it. Directors. Remuneration. When we talk about remuneration, it refers to the amount we are paying to our staff. So this is wages or salary paid to a director. Director's remuneration. And that is 2,800. So we sum it all up to know the total cost of administration overheads. 
So 2,260 plus 4,000, sorry, 460 plus 140 plus 140 and then 2,800. And that gives us 5,800 as the total administrative cost. Total administrative cost. Lastly, with our requirement D, we are asked to look for other expenses that were incurred for the product or on the product. And any other costs that were incurred from our type of overhead should fall under finance. But the question didn't use finance here, it used what? Other expenses. So all other costs that were incurred on the product will fall under other expenses. So back to our question interest on the venture or fall under finance but we're grouping them under other expenses so we take our worksheet and we indicate requirement d other expenses and the first one is interest on the venture and the amount given is 2400 2400 we also have cash discount allowed cash discount allowed here which would have also be under our finance overheads as a type of overhead so we indicate cash discount allowed under the other expenses cash discount allowed and the amount given is 1540 1540 we have donations and then back charges as 300 and 200 respectively donations here as 300 and then bank charges as 200 so let's indicate that on our worksheet Donations Donations as three hundred and then bank charges as two hundred. I'm sure we've been able to identify all the cost elements and where they belong to. Now we can sum it all up to know the total cost of the other expenses incurred on the product. We have 2,400 plus 1,540 plus 300 plus 200. And that will give us 4,440 as the total expenses anytime you meet a question on cost statement always look at your requirement to prepare the cost statement sometimes you are asked to group them under either direct or indirect cost sometimes too you are asked to prepare the full cost statement of which you are going to start from the prime cost you add your factory overheads and you add the prime and factory to get your production of um, cost of production after getting the cost of production, we add all other overheads to give us the total cost. If you have been able to identify all these cost elements, I am sure anytime you meet any question on cost element, you'll be able to do your best. Now, let's get rolling as we start the main topic for the day. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be looking at material control. When we say it's material control, how many of you go to the market and buy stock of materials into your homes 
for the whole month. In doing that, it means you have set a target or a level that when your items get to, you need to go back to the market and replenish. So material control basically is about how we manage our stocks of materials in our home or in our organization. Basically, with cost accounting, we are looking at stocks in an organization. But as a costing student, you should be able to apply this in your homes. Sometimes our mothers go to the market and buy food stuffs in bulk for the month. But before the month will end, they need to reorder or go back to the market and replenish what they already have in their stores, meaning they are controlling what the stock at home. When it gets to a particular level, they have to add up so that there is no shortages at home. So today for our topic, material control, we are going to look at how to keep materials at their optimal level. Now, what is material control? Material control is the process of keeping stock at their optimal level. When we say optimal level, it means it shouldn't be, there shouldn't be any shortage in stock or there shouldn't be excess in stock. You always have to keep your materials in your stores at its optimal level so that when you require a particular item of material for production, it will always be available. We have various essentials of material control. Essentials of material control. To be able to keep material at their optimal level, there are various things we have to look at before we will be able to achieve that. And the first one is trained personnel. How do we have trained personnel? to be in charge of our stores. For every store in our organization, there is a storekeeper. There is not just any ordinary person keeping our stock for us. So one essential of material control is a trained personnel. You need a trained personnel to be able to keep your stock in your stores. Another essential of material control is your storage facility. For every organization, you need a proper storage facility or an adequate storage facility to keep your stores. If you are dealing with perishable materials, you know you need a freezer or a free to keep them. You need an air conditioning room to keep your stores to prevent them from what spoilage. You cannot leave your stock on the heat so that it will get spoiled. But you need what? A ventilated room to keep your stores. So for every store keeping, we need what? A proper storage facility to keep our stocks of material. We have to keep an effective stock levels. Effective stock levels is also another type or essentials of material control. As I mentioned earlier, for material control, you are not supposed to go beyond the optimal level or go below the optimal level. You are always supposed to keep your stock at their optimal level so that materials will be readily available for production. Another essential of material control is what proper documentation. Proper documentation. Proper documentation. You have to keep proper records for your past events so that you can compare them. When auditors come around to audit your stock in the, in the stalls, there should be a proper documentation that they can compare with. If you have stated that you have 100 materials in your stores, it should conform with whatever you have in the stores. You cannot state 100 materials in the stores and on record, you have recorded 120, meaning there is what? A shortage in your stores. So every storekeeper have to do what? Keep proper documentation. The last essential of material control is authorization. That means proper documents have to be used to authorize personnel to enter the stores. This will prevent what fraud. No unauthorized person can enter the stores. Now let's look at material control processes. There are four processes involved in material control. The first one is purchasing of materials. Purchasing of materials. We have purchasing of materials. Then 
reception and inspection of materials then we have storage of materials and then issuing of materials which means facts and material need to be purchased then we receive and inspect those materials that have been purchased then storage of materials after we have received and inspect those materials we need to store the materials and the last one we issue them out to production once you have stored your material definitely a user will come and request for it and that is when we will have to issue those materials for production so for today we'll be looking at the first process of material control the first process of material control and that is purchasing of materials purchasing of materials what is purchasing of material i know we have all been doing some buying in one way or the other even before you set off to school you go to the market and buy your provisions that is what buying you find a need for that particular item that is why you went on the market to purchase such goods so when we talk about purchasing is basically the process of buying goods and services and it varies from person to person and from organization to organization my needs may not be your needs and the needs of joy tv may not be the needs of what gh1 so depending on our needs we go on the market and purchase a product purchasing also involves acquiring materials of right quality in the right quantity at a reasonable price and at the right time i know you will not just get up to the market and go and buy anything when you don't need them so you buy the materials at the right time you needed it before you went to the market to buy it and when you go to the market you buy them what at a reasonable price when someone is quoting 100 ghana and another is quoting 80 ghana i'm sure you compare the prices before you buy but what check the quality too is also what's important and then the quantity of the materials you would need for yourself or for production purchasing also is done by what the purchasing department someone will say why not the stores stores keep the product or they store the product but it is the job of the purchasing department to purchase any product in an organization and that is done by the receipt of a purchase requisition note from the stores department now let's look at the processes or the procedure or the steps of purchasing a material in one diagram this is the summarized process or procedure of purchasing in an organization the first is the purchasing requisition note so upon a purchase requisition note received an organization have to make buying of a particular material after receiving the purchase requisition they also invite tenders or quotations then a purchase order is sent after a purchase order is sent we receive and inspect our materials and the last one is checking and passing of bills for payment let's go further and explain this point that have been noted in the diagram so the first procedure or step of purchasing a, a, a material is upon purchasing requisition how do we come about the purchasing requisition okay so at home you realize that you need a particular material at home what do you do let's say those in the boarding house when you are at school and you need something you call your mother and inform her that mom my milo or my shuttle is done and that is when your mother will also go on to get the material on the market or either she will prepare it at home for you so upon the initiation of the purchase requisition a purchasing officer is supposed to do what buy a needed material so then now let's take it to our organization how is mat uh, materials being bought 
The first thing is what? A material requisition note. So when a user department, let's say account department, need some documents in the office and they realize that they don't have, they will issue a material requisition note to the stores department because the stores department is in charge of keeping the materials in the stores. So when the user department, as in the account department, issue a material requisition note to the stores department, requesting for a particular material. When the stores department have those materials in the stores, they issue them out to the account department, which is the user department. But when stores doesn't have such a material in the stores, they go on to issue a material requisition note. And that is what initiates purchasing. The purchasing, sorry, the material requisition note received by the stores for them to give a uh, issue out an item to them when they don't have such item or material my stores department also issue material requisition notes to the purchasing department and the purpose of the purchasing requisition notes is to inform the purchasing department about the need to purchase a material and then for what future reference Purchasing department will keep that document for future reference, indicating that it was stores that requested for such a material. Now, upon the receiving, sorry, upon the upon receiving the purchasing requisition notes from stores department, the second step of the purchasing procedure is the invitation to tenders or quotations but before that let's look at a sample of the purchase requisition notes so as indicated on your screens this is a sample the whole thing on the screen is a sample of a purchase requisition note you can see the number and the dates they are going to request purchase department to buy a material so please purchase for so if it's account department you indicate there and then you have the description of the article, that is whichever material they are supposed to buy, being it stationary or um, let's say we need a mob or we need some tools in the organization, you describe such item. Then the quantities we are supposed to buy and then the remarks upon this, the purchasing department also do what? Invite tenders or Quotations. So after receiving it, the purchasing department has to find the best source to purchase the material from. So let's say Joy TV needs some computers for their program. They will go to Franco Enterprise and then um, Dell Company to check on their um, prices. That is what they are going to make inquiry on their quotations, their prices, the kind of material they have, and the time of their delivery, whether it will be okay or it will suit them. So before that, after inviting the quotations, they select a supplier to bring their quotation. So if we can have two or more um, tenders coming in with their um, quotations, for the company to choose from. So when they bring it, and I think I'm okay with Franco uh, company's prices, the organization then go on to select such a supplier to supply them with their goods or materials. The next procedure is the purchasing order. The purchasing order. The purchasing order is prepared after the suitable supplier have been selected by the organization. So if they went in for Franco, they now saying what a purchase order for the organization indicating the number of quantity they are requiring to buy. So the purchase order is used by the purchasing department to authorize the supplier to supply the specified materials at the price and terms therein. It means after the quotations were received, the prices that were stated in the quotations is the same price the organization is expecting to buy those materials. So we invite 
we send sorry the purchase order to the supplier indicating them to supply the specified materials at the price they stated in their quotations the fourth method sorry the fourth procedure of the purchasing is follow up of purchasing order follow up of purchasing order so after the purchase order has been sent to the supplier the purchasing officer need to follow up on the purchase order you need to know the time the um, supplier will supply your goods the day the required material you need if the person is going to get the exact things for you so the purchasing order is being followed after it has been sent to the supplier to speed up delivery of the requested materials so anytime an organization issue a purchasing order to the supplier they still have to follow up and know if they are going to receive the goods at the specified or stated time on their agreement terms and the last but not the least method of purchasing procedure is receipt and inspection of the materials receipt and inspection of the materials so after following up the next thing is the supplier to deliver the goods to the purchasing officer we should know that stores don't buy materials they only receive and store them but the responsibility of the purchasing department is to buy materials for the running of an organization in some organization you will see procurement officer is the same as the purchasing officer they are responsible for all the buyings in an organization so the next is the receipt and inspection of material that is receiving materials and inspecting them is vital in purchasing procedure because non-specified materials could be detected and returned to the supplier immediately so you need to receive the goods or the materials that were requested for and then inspect them whether any material that you didn't request has been added or any inferior goods have been added to what you requested for and if you detect such material you have to do what return the material to the supplier immediately and so for your assignment you are to define the material control I know it will be so easy for you to do that if you are finding any difficulty as i always say you can refer in your textbooks or you can go online and check you should also state the essentials of material control and last you state and explain the material control process i believe you have understood today's lesson I am Judith Oforua Afari and I've been your course accounting facilitator. So until we meet again another session, have a beautiful week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.